Hey there, YouTube denizens. Today we're talking about gas regulators. But before we get into that, working with gas and combustibles is extremely dangerous. You have to know what you're doing. You should be licensed or extremely experienced with working with gas before you try to install anything like this. First off, what is a gas regulator? A gas regulator is a common component in most gas appliances and heating systems. The wider technology at work here is a pressure regulator, which is a type of valve which takes a certain input pressure and outputs a desired output pressure, generally much lower. The mechanism behind this is remarkably simple. It dates back to 1825 in the Victorian era. Here's the down and dirty on it. A pressure adjustment handle or set screw screws into the mixing chamber. Attached to this is a spring connected to a diaphragm. Attached below the diaphragm is a poppet, basically a plug which fits the only hole between the high pressure chamber and the low pressure chamber. The gas flows in through the hole unblocked by the poppet, and as the low pressure chamber begins to rise in pressure, it pushes against the diaphragm, which in turn closes the gap between the plug and the hole, allowing less and less gas through. As the set screw is screwed in, it increases the resistance of the diaphragm through the spring, increasing the output pressure. As it screws in the other way, it decreases resistance. So less pressure in the low pressure chamber is needed to close the gas exchange. Don't be mistaken though. A gas pressure regulator is not intended to be a gas tight shutoff. Even if you adjust the screw to its maximum shutoff position, that doesn't guarantee that it won't let any gas through. The final component is the vent, a tiny hole in the chamber behind the diaphragm with a threaded connection. In this threaded connection, you can either put a vent limiting device such as this or a vent protector. A vent limiting device allows the area behind the diaphragm to inhale air unobstructed, allowing for faster response times on the opening cycle. The vent protector does exactly what it sounds like. It protects that hole, sealing it so that no foreign particulates can get in. Different applications call for different choices. Generally, a vent limiting device is used in an indoor application or somewhere where limiting the amount of gas escape due to a diaphragm failure is absolutely critical. A vent protection device is used generally in an outdoor application where you're trying to prevent particles or water from getting into the diaphragm. So when do you need to use a gas regulator? You need to use a regulator whenever you're using LP, propane gas, or natural gas for any kind of application like a gas-fired water heater, gas ranges, or a gas furnace. Max Trail provides several different kinds of gas pressure regulators, namely appliance regulators and line pressure regulators. Appliance regulators, such as the 325 series, were commonly used as line pressure regulators until the ANSI Z21.80 regulation. After this standard was adopted, appliance regulators were no longer allowed to be used as line pressure regulators, but they're still okay for appliance use. Line pressure regulators like this 325L series are more expensive because of their higher material and design as specified in the standard. They also provide regulators with an in-blue anodized coating, which provides corrosion resistance, making it ideal for outdoor use. Now, one last important thing to know about gas regulators is sizing. A poorly sized gas regulator can have excessive lockup pressure. Lockup pressure is the range of pressures at and above where the gas regulator will stop letting gas through. If lockup pressure is excessive, it won't let any gas through until the upstream pressure is relieved. Maxtrail is a great tool on their website to tell you exactly what model will be correct for your application. The link for that will be down in the description. For the most part, sizing will be based on the size of your inlet and outlet pipes. But there's a number of other factors to consider, such as the inlet pressure, the outlet pressure, and the type of gas being used. Again, I would go on the Maxtrail website and use their online calculator to figure out exactly what product is correct for your specific application. Keep in mind, regulations state that anywhere where the inlet pressure exceeds two PSI indoors, you must use an overpressure protection device in case of a failure in the line pressure regulator. That's all for us today. Remember, if you're a DIYer, don't try to do this unless you really know what you're doing. This is a job better left for licensed professionals or extremely experienced individuals. You do not want to accidentally turn your house into a gas bomb. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and maybe leave us a comment telling us what you'd like to see from us in the future. Thanks. Have a good one.